Hello everyone, this is Zia Kalpana here. In this video, we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equation. So let's get going. Problem. Solve d square plus 9 into y equals to e power x minus cos 2x. Solution. Firstly, let's find the degree, order and degree of the given differential equation. Identify the highest derivative here. D square is the highest derivative, so order will be 2. And the highest power of the highest derivative is a degree. Degree is 1. Or you can just write the given differential equation as d square y plus 9y equals to e power x minus cos 2x. We know that d is the differential operator. Then d square will be d square by dx square. Now we can write d square y as d square y by dx square plus 9y equals to e power x minus cos 2x. So here d square y by dx square is the highest derivative so order will be 2 and the highest power of the highest derivative is a degree. Degree is 1. We are given a differential equation which is an operator form. Given differential equation d square plus 9 into y equals to e power x minus cos 2x, which is an operator form f of d into y equals to q where f of d equals to d square plus 9 and q equals to e power x minus cos 2x. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Here yc is a complementary function, yp is a particular integral. We will find yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. If you take RHS to 0, we will get the homogeneous equation f of d into y equals to 0, which is the homogeneous equation to the given non-homogeneous equation. And we will find yp using 1 by f of d into q. So firstly, let's find yc using the auxiliary equation of homogeneous equation. The auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to d square plus 9. You are having f of d equals to d square plus 9. Let's replace the differential operator by m. So that will get f of m equals to m square plus 9. Now our auxiliary equation becomes m square plus 9 equals to 0. Now we can find roots using two ways, in two ways otherwise. is our auxiliary equation m squared equals to take this plus 9 to RHS it becomes minus 9 then m equals to plus or minus square root of minus 9 you can write minus 9 as minus 1 into 9 then you can split this as minus 1 square root of minus 1 into square root of 9 we know that square root of minus 1 equals to i and square root of 9 equals to 3 then this becomes plus or minus i3 or plus or minus 3i, right? Or, write plus 9 as minus of minus 9 equals to m square minus, you can again split this as, I mean minus 9 as minus 1 into 9. We know that i square equals to minus 1 and 3 square equals to 9. Then we can write or replace minus 1 by i square and replace 9 by 3 square. Then we'll get m square minus i square into 3 square 
equals to 0 from this we'll get m square minus we can write i square 3 square as 3 i whole square right this is in a minus a square minus b square form we can write it as a plus b into a minus b now we equate each factor to 0 From m plus 3i equals to 0, we'll get m equals to minus 3i. From m minus 3i equals to 0, we'll get m equals to 3i, right? Then m equals to minus 3i and plus 3i or plus or minus 3i, you can say. Same. We'll get the same thing, right? Then m equals to plus or minus 3i. Therefore, m equals to plus or minus 3i are the roots of our auxiliary equation m square plus 9 equals to 0, which are a pair of complex conjugates. If a plus ib is a complex number, its conjugate will be a minus ib. If a minus ib is a complex number, its conjugate will be a plus ib. Right? So we call a plus or minus ib as complex conjugate. If we have a pair of complex conjugate, then we can write yc as e power ax into one constant into cos bx plus the other constant into sine bx. Now let's write our complementary function. In our root, we have only purely imaginary, right? We don't have real part. In case of a0, we'll get y is equals to e power 0x into c1 cos bx plus c2 sin bx, right? Then yc becomes e power 0 into x is e power 0 into c1 cos bx plus c2 sin bx. Also, we know that e power 0 is 1. We know that e power 0 is 1, then we'll get 1 into c1 cos bx plus c2 sin bx, right? Which is c1 cos bx plus c2 sin bx. Now let's write complementary function for plus or minus 3i. y is equals to c1 cos replace b by then we'll get c1 cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x. Now let's find particular integral. We know that particular integral is given by 1 by f of d into q. We have f of d, d squared plus 9 into q, e power x minus cos 2x. We can write this as 1 by d squared plus 9 into cos term, minus 1 by d squared plus 9 into cos 2x. Right? We can find each term separately. Let's name first term as p, yp1, and second term as yp2, and find yp1 and yp2. Either you can find yp1, yp2 separately, or you can just go with the flow. If you are good at formulas and methods, you can just continue like this. Okay, firstly, let's find yp1 and yp2 and see what we'll get. yp1. 1 by d square plus 9 into e power x. So this is of 
1 by f of t into e power a x form. Then for a equals to 1, we'll find f of 1. Since we have f of d equals to d square plus 9. Now, we need to find f of a. For f of a equals to 1, we'll find f of 1 which is equal to 1 square plus 9 equals to 1 plus 9 equals to 10. Which is non-zero since f of 1 is non-zero. So we can replace d by 1. Okay. Then we'll get 1 by 1 plus 9 into e power x. Which is equals to 1 by 1 plus 9 into e power x. Equals to 1 by 10 into e power x. Therefore, y p1 equals to 1 by 10 into e power x. Now let's find y p2. We have y p2 equals to 1 by f of d into cos 2x which is of 1 by f of d into cos ax form. For a equals to 2, let's find d square which is given by minus a square is equals to minus 4 equals to 2, 2 square equals to minus 4. Now let's see what happens if we replace d square by minus 4. Always remember that denominator must be non-zero. If we replace d square by minus 4, we'll get minus 4 plus 9 which is 5. Non-zero, so the denominator is non-zero by replacing d squared by minus 4. So let's replace d squared. Replace d squared by minus 2 squared, which is equal to minus 4. Then this becomes 1 by minus 4 plus 9 into cos 2x, which is equal to 1 by 5 into cos 2x. Therefore, y p2 equals to 1 by 5 into cos 2x. Now coming to yp. Replace yp1 and yp2. We have yp1 1 by 10 into e power x minus yp2 1 by 5 into cos 2x. Therefore, yp equals to 1 by 10 into e power x minus 1 by 5 into cos 2x. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then y equals to we have yc c1 cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x plus yp 1 by 10 into e power x minus 1 by 5 into cos 2x. Right, this completes the problem. Now let's see how to find yp without using yp1 and yp2. Instead of finding each term separately, let's see how to find yp directly. Here you are having 1, right? If this is of 1 by f of d into e power ax form. For a equals to 1, if you replace d by 1, we'll get 1 square, which is 1 plus 9, non-zero. So we can replace d by 1. Then we'll get 1 plus 9 into e power x. Let it be minus. Here, this is of 1 by 4 of d into cos ax form. Then for a equals to 4, we need to find d square, which is given by minus 2 square, which is minus 4. If you replace d square by minus 4, you'll get minus 4 plus 9 in the denominator. Minus 4 plus 9 is plus 5 which is non-zero. So we can replace d squared by minus 4 here. Right? Here we have replaced d by 1. And here we have replaced d by minus 2 squared. Okay? So this becomes 1 by 10 into e power x minus 1 by minus 4 plus 9 is 5 into cos 2x. Right? Or... 1 by 10 into e power x minus 1 by 5 into cos 2x. 
So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equations in this video. Hope you'll understand. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.